To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Please stand clear of the doors. For favor, we invite you to the day. This is here. Why are you so nervous? When in this strange trap, dawn is changing. Hello and welcome to Miles from Main Street, your Far From Disney podcast. My name is Mikhailo. And I'm Brian. And we're here to talk about Disney World. But especially coping away from Disney. Which we know a lot about being from the Midwest. So today we are wrapping up our tour of Disney World with Disney Springs. We're going to go over some dining, some shopping, and other attractions at Disney Springs. Disney Springs used to be called Downtown Disney, and uh, it's basically kind of like your shopping and dining area um, at Disney World. And it's a place I like to go to kind of get away from the parks, but kind of still feel that um, like you, like you're still in Disney bubble. Yeah, if you think about Disney Springs and what it is at this point, it's a really good place to go hang out when the parks are closed. Uh, or I tend to use it as um, somewhere to go during the day when I'm not in a park um, just to get that extra shopping done. So you're not, I'm not wasting that time in the park doing more shopping. So if you think about what that is and you think about how we got here, this is exactly what they wanted. They wanted to keep you in the bubble. And back when they first opened, they noticed right away that many people were leaving to go to downtown Orlando and to the nightlife down there, which was really popular at the time. So they came up with the, uh, I believe it was called the Walt Disney World Village. And they started having nightlife down there and trying to keep people inside the bubble. So yeah, it's a great way to stay inside the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I remember uh, when I was younger, uh, it was it was always called Downtown Disney when I was going there, and now it's changed to Disney Springs. And um, it's e- even since I first went there, uh, Downtown Disney itself had evolved, and I think we've we've seen the biggest um, change when it switched over to Disney Springs because now. Uh, everything's kind of linked with a story before it was kind of like you had like the West side and you had the shopping district area and it was still kind of like understated. Um, But now it's just really blown up. Uh, I was looking at stats here uh, because they have these on the, the Disney website and they're saying that now there's 103 shops, there's 63 dining areas and there's 22 shows, events, and attractions. So that's, I mean, that's a lot. And that's a lot to do, too. And they're building more as we speak. Yeah. So it, it really is a lot. There's so much to see when you're down there. And this is this is coming from, like, before, I feel like the shopping wasn't as immersive as it, as it is now. It's really, it's really turned into a shopping center before it was kind of like a couple, a couple name brand shops, but mostly Disney shops that, that sold Disney things. Um, the world of Disney, uh, which is still there uh, was the, I think that was the biggest draw was um, people would go to the world of Disney. Uh, and I think, I think it's the same now, but people would always tell me, um, don't shop in the parks, just go to the world of Disney because the world of Disney has everything I'm doing air quotes right now, has everything that the parks have. Um, People, people would always tell me cast members back in the day would tell me this. And uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent that that's, that that, that's accurate. Um, But yeah, I, I, they, the, the world of Disney is huge. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, completely surprised but i feel like i've seen stuff in the parks that i haven't found at world of disney before yeah i've found things at the parks or seen things at the parks and thought i'll wait until we get to world disney i'll just pick it up there not gonna happen oh yeah um yeah there's and i don't use the dis the shop disney app anymore but they used to have a separate 
like shop Disney Parks app, and you could go and find where things were located in within Disney World. Mm. Um, so when we were out on our last trip, or the last time that was available, it's been a while. Uh, you know, I could pull that up quick and be like, "Am I going to find this at World of Disney?" Nope. Okay, I got to buy it now. You know, it was so. <laughs> It may have used to be that way that you could go and pick up whatever you needed at World of Disney, but it's not that way anymore. Yeah, 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 definitely. That and that is an awesome tip. I wonder if it's uh I know Shop Disney Parks isn't a thing anymore. Uh I'm pretty sure it's all uh bunched into that one Shop Disney app. Uh there's a parks section in the Shop Disney app, but it's not nearly everything that you can find in the parks. Um but that's a that's a cool tip. We should we should actually look into that and see if that's still a thing that you can you can do where you can check where things are in the parks or wh- where things are sold in the parks. So that 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 would be really cool. Yeah, and when I was using it, I would mention something to a cast member, and they'd even look at me like, "What?" <laughs> so it was it was something I don't know. I I don't know if they liked it, didn't like it, were testing it, what it might have been, but mm. I liked that I could find what I was looking for. Um, and I know that there is some of that still in the shop Disney app. I don't tend to use it for whatever reason. It doesn't work on my phone. <laughs> so I just go to a browser and go onto the website to look at shop Disney. So anyway, for what that's worth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool little tip. We'll, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to uh, check up on that and see if there's another way, because I feel like that would, that would be, I mean, I would use that most definitely. Um, so yeah, but kind of moving on from from shopping, um, uh, downtown Disney and Disney Springs were always they always had dining locations there. One of my old school favorites, and this is coming from somebody who's eaten at places like the Boathouse. Uh, one of my just and it's my family's favorite too. For some reason, we just love it there. Uh, Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> still still one of my my favorite places to eat um i think it's it's honestly it's just nostalgia like the the place isn't that great and the food isn't too amazing it's it's really just kind of nostal- nostalgia for for us um but yeah there there are some amazing places to go eat um and again it's really evolved into like this real like me- metropolis area where like you've got all of these amazing places to eat there yeah, uh, I uh, as you're saying that, I'm trying to think of somewhere that we would go to eat prior um, to it becoming Disney Springs, and I really can't think of anything. I think mm-hmm. probably House of Blues is about the only place I could say mm-hmm. um, prior to Disney Springs. But uh, one of the, our favorites is just grabbing a sandwich at Earl of Sandwich. Yes. <laughs> it's such a great deal, and they're always so wonderful. <laughs> I actually, I've, I've never been to the Earl of Sandwich in Disney Springs, but I have been to the Earl of Sandwich at downtown Disney, which is or at downtown Disney in California, which is still called downtown Disney because it's still, it, they haven't really changed much. It's just like a little strip uh, kind of in between the two parks. So um, I have, I've had Earl of Sandwich there, but I, but I've never had it at, at Disney Springs. Their Christmas sandwich is one that a lot of people talk about. And yes. Yeah. I've, I saw that one there and I was really close to getting it because it was um, January. Uh, so it was right around that Christmas time. And I was thinking about getting it, but I don't think I got it. Uh, yeah. I, I always thought about it. I think my wife got it um, this last time around, but it, mm. they had some specialty sandwich. I want to say it was Buffalo or something or other. That mm. was pretty good. So that's what I ended up with. Yeah. Yeah, so with with Disney Springs now, um, it's re- it's really turned into this this new giant area. Um, that honestly, I've I've only been there uh, a couple times now. Um, I used to I used to know downtown Disney like the back of my hand, um, and now that it's Disney Springs and there's a whole story behind it and everything, and uh, there's just so much more to do. It it really kind of feels like. Um, 
there's kind of like a shopping mall area where it, it feels like one of those outdoor malls. Uh, and it's got a lot of, a lot more name brand uh, places now. Uh, there's a really big Under Armour store there that I thought was really cool, mainly because I used to, I used to work for Under Armour back in the day. Um, so I always thought that was cool. Uh, they've got places like really fancy places like Lululemon and stuff like that. So um, very yeah, cool. I believe Coach is there and mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know all the brand names like that, but uh, Ron John Surf Shop recently came in, <laughs> which whenever I'm in Florida, I'm like, I want to go to Cocoa Beach too, but I don't want to take time away from Disney to do it. So it's <laughs> yeah. nice that Ron John's there so I can get a little taste of that. <laughs> uh, it, but Disney Springs has gotten to be very large and it is a lot of fun to explore. Um, there's different avenues to take. Whereas I felt like when it was just downtown Disney, there was one trek. It was kind mm-hmm. of like one street and you had to walk through a dead <laughs> paradise island during the day to <laughs> yeah. get to the west side or you know to get to the either side of it, uh, which was kind of weird. But um, I remember walking through Pleasure Island and it was dead. There's nobody there because it hadn't opened yet, but they had a couple of shops open, mostly art. And like these people, you could tell they did not want to be there. So maybe that probably led to why there is no Pleasure Island at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it, it just flows so much better now. Mm-hmm. You don't really see where the Disney part ends or and where the new shopping district starts you know it it really just flows together and you can really go and adventure around and discover what they have and i never felt back in the day with with downtown disney i never felt like holy crap there's a lot of people here even though like there were a lot of times where there was a lot of people at downtown disney but i feel like the draw to disney springs now and this could be because they've done such a good job with that area that it's actually pulling people from Orlando. I think before it was people who were staying at Disney and maybe some other people who were really into Disney. I know if I, um, if I lived cl- anywhere close to downtown Disney, I'd be at down to Disney every night. Um, but yeah, I think there, there's a lot more of a draw now for downtown Disney because they've, they've really updated a lot of this stuff and plus it, if you will. Um, so that's what's, I mean, and, and that can be a, a good thing and a bad thing where it's, uh, when I was there, I felt like there were just like so many people, but at the same time, that's something that I think is cool that like Disney is obviously doing a very good job and, um, being a Disney goer, uh, where a lot of the people in my family teach. So we, we had never been able to go out to Disney during, uh, uh, non-peak hour or non-peak times so we were always there in like august where it was super hot and it was super crowded and there was always a lot of people around so i've never i've always had to wait in lines and and be around a lot of people so i've never had an issue with that so i i actually it felt kind of happen when i was there when there was just like a lot of people around and it seemed pretty busy um and i just never feel like i had that when i was at disney or uh downtown disney before um so that's 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 a i I think is a big change from when when they changed over to disney springs whereas now they're pulling a lot more people from orlando and they've kind of turned it into a big attraction itself yeah and uh, you'll hear some of the other talking heads around the disney lexicon that you know they say hey I'd rather just go to Disney Springs. I don't need to go to a park. I'm probably in Disney Springs more than I am in any of the parks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's kind of a testament to what Disney Springs has become. Definitely. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally agree. So uh, let's go, let's go through a couple things. We've kind of talked about um, the dining and shopping and kind of the ambiance of Disney Springs. Um, But let's, let's kind of uh, let's focus in a little bit. Um, so dining, um, I've been to a couple places. Um, obviously I talked about the rainforest cafe, which is, uh, it's not, 
it's not nothing special, but my, my family loves it. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we love going there. And it, and there's just something about that, that, um, Disney Springs one that we just love. Um, but, uh, it's got some, some really amazing places out there. Boathouse is another one that I've been to. That is one of the more luxurious, <laughs> uh, places to go eat. Um, we went there just recently, um, and we had a great time. Uh, the ambiance inside is, is very cool. It's kind of like, it's meant to obviously look like a boathouse and it's, uh, lots of maritime, uh, paraphernalia and stuff like that. Um, but the food, the food is great. If you are looking for steaks and seafood boathouse is where it's at. Um, and I actually took, um, we talk about Lou a lot. Uh, I think we're both pretty big, uh, Lou Mangello fans, but he, he talks about the boathouse a lot. And so when I was able to, uh, book something for downtown Disney and I saw that the boathouse had openings, I snatched one off right away. Uh, and I, I would have to say Lou, uh, Lou was not kidding when he said the boathouse is amazing because the boathouse is amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's somewhere that I would like to go. Um, we, we have been into Jack Lindsay's hangar bar, which is mm-hmm. right next door. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to cruise their docks because the boathouse, I don't know if it's the owner or, or how it is, but they've got a lot of collectible boats out on their dock behind mm. it. Um, so I was able to, from the dock at, or the deck at uh, Jack Lindsay's, I was able to kind of see the different boats that they have sitting out there. So it's not just a place with great food. They've got great places to sit. They've got boats that you mm-hmm. can sit in and eat. They've got I believe inside, don't they have a boat inside that you can sit in? Yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, they have a, they have a boat as a table. And I, I thought that was the coolest thing. And it's like, right. Like just as you walk in and kind of down, it's like right there. Uh, That's right. I, we did look in there. We didn't stay or anything, but <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So, I, you know, we can transition over to Jack Lindsay's. That was a pretty cool place. They've got some specialty drinks. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got a really neat story built into the bar which you know me i love all those little details um but the jock Lindsay is a character that they've built into this bar um and you can see all of his different adventures all over the place and they've even got a diving um like a bell i don't know what you call them but the divers will sit in there and it's like this big thing an actual mm, one like in okay. there that's a table that you can go and sit <laughs> for dinner or whatever so my wife and i had drinks there one time and it was just beautiful sitting out on their deck next to the water having some drinks and relaxing so that was really great yeah and i i yeah i I was uh sitting out there because we had put our name into uh boathouse and so we kind of like sat because they have that like little front area with all their all their furniture so we were able to sit out there and kind of, I think we had a couple of drinks there too, but it was all, it was all outside. Um, but that's one thing, uh, that I really enjoy about downtown Disney that actually, um, I'm about to go out, go on a tangent, uh, that I don't see happening a lot with Disney attractions. I feel like the story uh, of downtown Disney is so cool and it's so original. Uh, even you just, um, these little bars that they have this backstory that is just so clever and so cool. And I feel like we uh, just like tower of terror. That was, that was something that was an original story. Uh, they, I mean, it wasn't original. They, they took it from a whole bunch of other, um, IPs, but they kind of made it their own, um, but like, I just feel like that's kind of where that that is happening the most is at downtown Disney at the at these small little places where they're kind of coming up with these genius ideas. And I feel like a lot of times when they're thinking about new attractions, it's kind of more like what what's the IP that we currently have that we can get that we can turn into an attraction that people will like. Um, I just I just feel like they need to start looking more into like what's something new and fun that they can make rather than 
what's what's some cool IP that we can we can stick into the parks. Not that like I mean, this is me complaining about Disney. Disney does some like really amazing things, and like anything that they're gonna do uh, is gonna be amazing. But that's just like kind of one thing that that I thought I always thought about when I was at Downtown Disney was like how all of this stuff is so cool and original. Um, yeah, I kind of wish they were they were doing more of this in the parks. So that can try to look TED past the, <laughs> <laughs> I try to look past the IP thing um, and just try to look at the experience that they're giving you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you really think about Disneyland when it was first built, yes, there are a lot of original ideas. Um, but at the same time, there are also a lot of r- rides that had IP in them. Um, I don't know that, and maybe it's because of how Disneyland was born that uh, Walt wasn't really thinking that he needed to have IP in the park. He just wanted to come up with really cool ideas and really cool um, experiences. I know that Sleeping Beauty was coming out at about that time that Disneyland was opened. So they said, hey, Walt, why don't we have a sleeping beauty castle instead of fine, whatever he didn't care. And um, just to go a little further, Roy told him when it was time to start building Disneyland, he didn't get to use Mickey mouse. (laughs) So that like, like in front of the train area there where Mickey mouse was is now Mm -hmm. like in the grass, that wasn't there. He wasn't allowed to use that. But then Roy kind of was like, okay, fine, after he realized how popular it was. Mm-hmm. But it was one of those ideas that everyone thought it was going to fail. So he, <laughs> Roy was just like, we're not going to put money into something that might fail and then ha- and then lose Mickey over it at the same time. So that could be why he went more with the original ideas at the time. But now we've got all this IP. We've got all these great ideas. We've got all these great stories. Let's throw that in there. Why not? Um, it doesn't bother me. We're get, you look at Pandora and Flight of Passage. Think about the experience you're getting there, the technology. I don't think about, oh, it's Pandora, another IP. I think, wow, we're, I'm flying on a bird of some sort, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I look at Star Wars. The Rise of the Resistance. I haven't ridden it. I've seen video of it, and it seems like it's the most amazing thing ever. At least that's what everyone tells me, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're getting an experience. Sure, it's Star Wars, but you're getting a really cool experience with really cool audio, audio animatronics and technology, and you know. So I don't, I kind of go past the IP. It's always been a history, part of the history of the park. So, whatever. <laughs> oh, and and I I totally agree with you. I uh and I think the reason I I feel that way is because uh I would have to say Epcot is <laughs> Epcot is my favorite park. Um, but for a long time Epcot was my favorite park, and um, it that was more about kind of like original concept ideas and stuff like that. Uh, and so that's kind of where I'm like, Oh, can't we do, do something a little bit more original? And I feel like whenever Disney does that, whenever they do come out with something original, it's very cool. But uh, you're, you're completely right with um, the beginning of Disneyland was um, in large part to was to advertise for all of these other things that Disney was doing. Um so so yeah like there's there's a good like little push and pull with that where it's like ip's great but these imagineers can come up with with such amazing things that like i mean i like i said i'm i'm not gonna be angry with anything disney comes out with unless they come out with uh another one of those limo rides at um california adventure um (laughs) that was just terrible (laughs) um yeah they haven't failed as much as they've succeeded. So I put my trust in in the Imagineers. (laughs) But anyway, this story for downtown Disney um, is it's so it's, it's kind of like every little area and every little like bar and restaurant and shop um, is it's all kind of tied into this 
uh, large story. And I've, I've sat down and, and read the story about Disney Springs, but like, it just never sticks. Cause there's just, <laughs> there's so much <laughs> to it. Um, yeah. It's a, there's a, there was a bottling company there, I believe. <laughs> and I think you could even buy the bottles that say Disney Springs bottling company on it. Mm, that's cool. Well, yeah, we're, we're not even going to try to, <laughs> if you, there, right. there's, Places you can go online <laughs> to look up the story of Disney Springs. And it's it's all very cool. And it kind of ties everything together. Um, and it's even from like location to location, which is so cool. Um, well, and I think that, you know, it, down the road, we do want to do some podcasts like that where we're mm-hmm. talking about those types of details. But right now we're just kind of giving that tour of Disney Springs. So, you know go look up something and, and post it on our Facebook and let us know, tell us what it is. Cause we'd love to talk about it later on another podcast and really dig down deep into that, those details. Definitely. We, we love digging down deep into details, even when we're not supposed to dig down deep into details. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it anyways. Um, cool. So now uh, let's kind of transition into shops. Um, shopping is a large part of what I do just when I go to Disney world, like I just love, I always come home with at least like 20 bags, um, Disney bags. Uh, honestly, I have like a whole bunch of stuff in my closet right now. <laughs> um, I saw a meme once that's like, no one just throws away a Disney shopping bag. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it me it means so much. <laughs> it does. Like, the thousands of dollars you've spent to get this bag. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Um, But yeah, the, the shopping down at Disney Springs when it was downtown Disney is just expanded. There's a whole, there's a whole little area that's kind of like an outdoor mall. And that's kind of where all of the uh, like coach and Lululemon and all these other places we're talking about, all these giant name brand stores uh, are. Um, and that's kind of like the, one of the biggest areas that they kind of rebuilt. Um, I think it's cool because it definitely, it's got one of those vibe, like, like city center vibes to it. Uh, and they actually use it that way a lot where they'll have, um, events there, um, and stuff like that. Uh, and, and that definitely brings the, the Orlando crowd out to go, uh, and shop there and, and be there for these cool events. I love how um, they'll even kind of do up that area for Christmas. The last time I was I was there, it was it was done up for Christmas. Um, so it's so it's all very cool, and um, I love the world of Disney. Obviously, there's always so many cool things there, and I spend just like hours walking around there trying trying to find things to buy. Um, and uh, they also have it's still there. Uh, they also have the Lego store which I always, always thought was very cool. And, and <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I, I went into the Lego store recently on my, on my last uh, trip and I hadn't gone in there in a while because uh, after a while it's like the Lego store is cool, but I, I'm, I'm just not building Legos anymore. And I went in there and like, <laughs> this stuff is expensive. It all looks super cool. But like they got the Millennium Falcon in there for like 200 bucks and like full size, not full size, but like giant X wings um, and all of these, these really cool Lego things. And a lot of that stuff is <laughs> more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Cause like <laughs> back, back in my day, it was like, you put a couple Legos together and you got a car with wheels. Like, like that was it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I would have to say uh, if I had to choose uh my favorite shops there. Um, I definitely like the more Disney themed shops, like the world of Disney. Uh, they also have uh, a couple of shops out there that are, um, I think they have a lounge fly store out there. That's just lounge fly stuff. Um, and then they also have, it's like a Disney like art, uh, area where they have like, uh, paintings and just like different art pieces that are all Disney. Uh, it's, that's, that stuff is all really expensive too. Um, but I, I, I enjoy, uh, those, the shops that are a little bit more 
uh, aimed towards Disney. Not that I don't like to shop at Under Armour or any of these other places. Um, but, and, and that whole shopping area is definitely like premium. Like it, it feels really cool when you're in there, but uh, I mean, I can get that at home. There, there is an Under Armour store on State Street here in Madison, uh, which is actually pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it just, it feels more special when you go to these downtown Disney locations that are more themed towards Disney. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I think one of the cool things that they've done is that before it was Disney Springs, you kind of had the Disney and, and you had the, you know, like, as I said before, Pleasure Island breaking it in half and you kind of had this other side that had some different type of shops and some chains and different things but there wasn't Mm -hmm. really a shopping district like there is in the middle now um but what i to your end about the disney shops what i really like what i really like what they've done is that they've taken some of the space and they've put these disney shops all across Disney Springs. Mm-hmm. So if you're down on the end by House of Blues, there's a Star Wars shop, there's a Marvel shop. Um, there's, you know, other, like I think Trendy is down there, mm, which is yep. another Disney shop. And they'll have certain types of products in these stores. So like Trendy has a lot of the new hip type of clothing in it, you know. He's... Don't laugh at me. I'm a hipster too. Come on. You guys, you guys should have seen how Brian <laughs> Brian was like like moving around and shaking like these new trendy. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I mean, I'm I, I don't consider myself trend trendy anymore either. So <laughs> I definitely am not. Just ask my daughter. Uh, <laughs> um but yeah, you can you can find these different things all across Disney Springs, and it not necessarily like what, like what like what we had said about World of Disney is that you may not find it in World of Disney. You'll find it in one of these other shops instead. So you know, trendy I, that's the one I keep going back to. But they they might have a product reveal or debut there instead of in World of Disney because everything mm-hmm. happens in World of Disney. It seems, but it. <laughs> not anymore um the other thing that i like that they've started doing is that they've given some space to some small startup companies uh the one that i can think of offhand is these pop-up uh greeting cards where they would kind of they're like 3d pop-up things and they're really intricate and detailed Mm. like they're I thought they were really cool when I saw them. Um, I wish I could remember the name of the company now, but mm-hmm. uh, I think they started in a little kiosk down near uh, Paddlefish. Um, but I think they've moved into the Marketplace Co-op now. Cool. Um, maybe they got more space there or something. But mm-hmm. I think that's really cool that they're picking up these little startup businesses and giving them space and allowing them to grow a business too. So. Mm-hmm it makes Disney Springs a little more hip. A little, <laughs> a little more hip. <laughs> yeah. And that kind of uh, bringing us down to trendy and, and uh, all those places down there that kind of brings us into the entertainment side of, of things. They uh, uh Disney Springs actually has an AMC theater. It's AMC, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and they also have uh, what's the, the bowling alley there. What's that called? Splitsville. Splitsville. I actually, I went to the Splitsville in uh, California, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, Apparently, and, they have the best sushi on property at the bowling alley. Splitsville does. That's what I've been told. Hmm. There, there's your your tip of the day. Best sushi. Yeah, that's I, and I do like sushi. I'll tell you, I've never had sushi like I had at California Grill. So. Hmm. I need to get into Splitsville. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not a, I'm, I've had sushi before and I didn't hate it, but it's sushi is not something where, I, where I, I've, I don't think I've ever been like, oh, I really want sushi today. It's like I can eat it, 
<laughs> I'm I'm kind of <laughs> indifferent. I don't I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's I've I can eat it. <laughs> As you were talking about sushi, I I did have another thought, and I'm kind of this isn't even tangent. This is just kind of breaking into something else. So forgive the bad segue here, <laughs> but uh, I uh, I was thinking about the dining plan, and um, if I could just mention. You know, because of COVID, they aren't doing the dining plan right now. My uh, my belief is that they got rid of it because they just didn't have the amount of dining space to make a dining plan work mm. for everyone. Um, because if you if you kind of if you're paying attention right now, a lot of it is mobile order, and the sit down restaurants are not open like they were pre COVID. So my gut feeling is that the dining plan will come back mm -hmm. at some point. Um, what it looks like, I don't know. So, mm -hmm. but here's my big tip. At the end of your vacation, make sure you have a little time at Disney Springs. That's, that's what, um, that's kind of how I got to this point is that we talked about Splitsville and sushi and I didn't, I haven't eaten there and I don't usually sit down at a restaurant at Disney Springs. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just not how my vacations have been set up. It's usually let's go there for a few hours. We'll, we can grab a bite at Earl of Sandwich or something, you know, just quick. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it hasn't been, let's go down there and have a meal. Um, so that's why I say I've heard Splitsville has the best sushi. But anyway, <laughs> back to my tip. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> random tonight. I'm sorry about that. Oh, it's all uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the end of your vacation, you may end up with snack credits left over. So what we will do is we will always go into Goofy's Candy Company. Mm, yeah. And we'll grab, uh, you know, get our fill of snack credits there mm -hmm. to take home. Uh, so I, I apologize for that break in the action. <laughs> oh, no, but, this is uh we Brian and I have talked about this before about we. uh we feel like we thrive a little bit better with uh, just kind of an open discussion about Disney. And so we, uh, we've been trying to kind of get away from our, uh, here are your tips, here are your uh, reviews, here's this. We, we're trying to kind of make it a little bit more open. And with that openness, you're going to get this sometimes. We're one of, we, we've already gone off on two tangents already on this. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about Ep about. Disney Springs, but somehow we ended up in Epcot for a while. So I, I will bring up Epcot every single episode because it's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways. So, yeah, we we're back on the west side. I think they're still calling it the west side. I don't know. I think they are sure. actually, yeah. Um, but yeah, on, on the west side, they have um, uh, Cirque du Soleil, which is another thing uh, I've never done before. Um, and they also have, uh, and this is uh, not necessarily controversial, but uh, I know of a couple, um, a couple YouTubers and and vloggers that uh, aren't too thrilled about it. But the NBA experience is out uh, out, out on the west side, which honestly I I think would be pretty cool. I I kind of uh, well, and, and this is coming from somebody who is whose favorite team. Uh, has been doing a lot better now and they they never used to before <laughs> that's the, <laughs> the milwaukee bucks fear the deer uh but um i i think it would be cool to get out and, and check out the nba experience um and that that actually took uh the uh the nba experience took the place of disney quest which uh was one of one of my favorite things to go do uh i i had done it a couple times uh, but and and this was when I was a when I was real young, um, and I thought it was just the coolest thing, just a giant free arcade that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that was one of one of uh, my favorite things. I thought it was just so cool. And this this was uh, when I was real young, um, was when I was able to go go do it. But yeah, Disney Quest was a really cool place. We we got to go do it too, and not only did it just have like video games, arcade style video games, which they had the old retro Star Wars video games. I thought that was awesome. Oh, I had to go. Yes. There was like <laughs> one on each floor of that place. So I had to go <laughs> and find it on each floor. 
um, and play that. That was so cool. Um, but they they had like interactive ones. Like I remember a Buzz Lightyear type of mm-hmm. thing where you got into like this little tank and shot at other tanks yes, with a ball. So you cool. know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and the one other thing I do remember, and I believe it was up at the top floor. I don't know why I remember it that way, but they had like a design your own roller coaster and mm-hmm. then you would get into a simulator and ride your roller coaster. So this is, this is how young I was when I went there was, I think I was either too scared or too young to actually go on that simulator because that simulator was intense. Like it was, it was pretty cool. Everything looked really awesome about it, but I think I might've been too scared. I, I might've, I might've been old enough, but I, I, I think they had like warnings on there and I, I didn't want to do it cause I was too scared, but yeah, that, that all looked really cool. Um, I remember I was in there once and they had those, um, it was another one of the, I think it was on that same top floor where everything was interactive, where it was, um, you were on a ship and it was a pirate ship and you were shooting cannonballs at other pirate ships. And it was kind of like pirates, of the Caribbean themed. Um, I thought that was really cool. That. Yeah, it, it was yeah, it was like a it was like a almost like a uh it was almost kind of like um uh midway mania where you had like your little um pull string and you would pull on every uh, on the pull string and then um cannonballs would come out. It was pretty cool. And then they also had the virtual jungle cruise which was just you on a on a paddle boat paddling. Yeah. <laughs> These were real things. <laughs> <laughs> I I still have my little map from when we went there. I'm going to have to oh, go pull wow. that out when we're done and, and look at that now. That's one thing I like to do. I've got mine stowed away somewhere. Um, but I love, like not that I ever need a map at this point walking around. Even when they make new stuff, most of the time I know where it is already. And I've watched the walkthroughs and I know what to do. So I never <laughs> actually need these maps. But I, I love grabbing the new maps uh and taking them home and and keeping them so yes i do the exact same and usually <laughs> i grab a few of them <laughs> yes. um because if people are asking me questions if they're going on a trip i'm gonna be like here here's a map this will help <laughs> you learn what you're doing and people are like love that i do that you know it's like because then they can sit down and be like this is a good way to get around things so mm-hmm. um i don't know just a little tangible thing to help somebody plan their trip yeah and i i actually um i never got they have these cool areas um in disney we're just going on tangents this entire this, <laughs> we're not even on disney springs anymore but um this is applicable um they have little areas where you can get those pins that say like first uh first trip and birthday and stuff like that um i've never actually use those because i'm never there on my birthday i i my first trip was like so long ago uh but when i went to california it was my first trip and i wanted a pin and so i found uh where they it was over by um the fire station where they just like you walk in there and all the pins are right there and nobody's standing over there so i took like five and so i have (laughs) i have five of the uh first uh first trip pins uh and so i have uh, have them all set up uh, I have some set up at my uh, office at work. I have some set up here. So, <laughs> well, we went down for our anniversary. Um, we went to check in, and the lady checking us in is like, "Well, why are you here?" And because we were staying at uh, we were at All Star Movies that time around, but um, you know, why are you celebrating something? And well, it's our anniversary, and. So then, you know, they were just switching over from happily ever after buttons to just the I'm celebrating button. Mm. And so we had already gotten an I'm I'm celebrating button, but she's like, well, how about the happily ever after one? I still have some of those. So (laughs) we were able to get one of those, um, which I was excited about just because I like to get things that are running out, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, those buttons are a lot of fun. Um, and speaking of buttons and Disney Springs, if anyone's going down for the Christmas season, they've started the Christmas tree stroll. I don't know if you've seen this yet. I haven't. Uh, they So they used to have a Christmas tree trail and it would be like right over in the world of Disney area. And uh, 
it was always kind of crammed together. Like you would go through this trail and you're kind of stuck in there going from tree to tree and it's really busy and packed in. Well, obviously they, they don't want that right now. Um, so they've spread the trees out across all of Disney Springs mm. and they've made it like an Epcot style uh, scavenger hunt type of thing oh, where cool. you need to go find the tree and then put the sticker on the map as to what that uh, theme of the tree is. Mm-hmm. And then when you get done, you go turn it in and they give you one of those buttons nice. and it says Christmas <laughs> tree stroll on it. So and that's a completely free thing to do. You don't have to pay for it or anything. Mm-hmm. And those are, those are the cool events that we're talking about. Um, it sucks that we, we can't be there to like go and, and cover these events. Cause that's like totally <laughs> something we would do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just these cool events that, that, that they have going on there that, uh, and it's always kind of themed to like Halloween and Christmas and, and all these fun things. Um, just to kind of uh, wrap everything up, um, since it's it's getting kind of late here, uh, most of the time uh, when I go to downtown Disney, I'll be there for a pretty long time. Um, and I've mentioned before, there was one time I was there until like one in the morning and like a random bus came and picked me up. But that was that's that's usually what I'll do on uh, when I go to downtown Disney. And it kind of has that like stay out late atmosphere. Um, it kind of has a little bit of a um, not like a party atmosphere, but that that's kind of like what they've got going on is like, there's a lot of cool entertainment. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on um, and it kind of gets you to stay, stay there uh, pretty late. Um, and their, their hours, uh, I don't know what their hours are now, now with COVID, but um, when I was there, it was always almost like one in the morning. That's when Disney Springs would um, start to kick you out. So I would I would tend to kind of stay there till one in the morning. Uh, that's how usually my my day would be a Disney Springs day where uh, we're not going into the park at all. Um, usually I'll in the morning I'll uh, resort hop and then um, spend that evening out at Disney Springs. So that's that's something cool that I've always liked to do is just kind of like wind down the night at disney springs and just like stay there till one in the morning and it's just uh it's a lot of fun it really is i like that it's open late too uh we had gone to dinner one time and uh, my wife and two of our kids they were just not interested out anymore so we went Mm -hmm. back to well this is when we were camping we went back to the campsite and they turned on a movie or whatever it was on tv and my uh, teenage daughter is more like I am where it's like I'm on when I'm on vacation I want to be doing things I want to see everything I want to mm-hmm. I don't sit still very well and so I she's like well I don't want to go back yet I don't want to do that so I'm like let's go to Disney Springs <laughs> she was looking for you know she was looking for a spirit jersey she got the yellow one mm, it just nice. come out when we got there <laughs> And so we went down to Disney Springs and she was able to find it at world of Disney. And Mm -hmm. we did a little strolling around and, you know, that that, it's really nice that they're open late and that you can just kind of come and go as you Mm -hmm. want. I used to, I used to do that myself where I would Disney um, Disney means so much to me that when I'm able to get there, I just love taking everything in. Um, And uh, when I was younger and we, we would go to Disney, I remember we had gotten there late at night. Um, we had just checked into our hotel and uh, it was, it was one of the all-stars uh, and <laughs> this sounds silly talking about taking in the all-star, but I mean uh, the all-stars are, are very cool in their own right. And they actually have a lot of really cool, um, uh, cool things to look at and kind of walk around and the air, the areas are very big. Uh, but I've, uh, I I did that myself where I just kind of like, I was so happy I was there. It was like midnight, but I just had to like walk around the all-star because I was finally home and I was finally back and I was so excited. Um, and now that my brother and sister have really gotten into this stuff with me, we, we will do that together. Um, where like, we'll be like, I don't, I don't, we're done with the park. Like, I don't, I don't want to go back to the hotel just yet. We'll, just go out to Disney Springs. And that's what's so cool about 
Disney Springs is that it's open till one. So most of the time you've got a few hours after a park closes to go out to Disney Springs and just like mess around. And they've got something to do around every corner. It seems Mm -hmm. like there's a DJ, there might be a local high school band playing at some (laughs) point. Um, They've got live entertainment, just like singers Mm -hmm. singing in the middle of the street, you know, Um, (laughs) it's just, they've got so much going on that you can find something that anyone's going to like. Um. So it, it it really is good for finishing an evening. Definitely. And with that, we are going to go ahead and finish our evening. But we haven't even talked about Ghirardelli yet. Oh, Ghirardelli. <laughs> <laughs> no, this has been fun. This has been fun. Yeah, yeah. We we hope you guys had fun. We had a lot of fun talking about it. Um Hope you had guys had a good time and uh, check us out next time at Miles from Main Street. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, please rate us on iTunes and subscribe. Email us at milesfrommainstreetpodcast at gmail.com with any thoughts and visit us on Facebook under Miles from Main Street. We'll be bringing more to you weekly and look forward to talking to you then. Until next week, remember, some live close, but most of us don't. So let's talk about it.